Marketer of the Day, Episode 522, Create, Qualify, and Close Phone Leads, Outbound, Inbound, and Appointment Setter Call Center Secrets, with Lead Hero, Glenn Shelton. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We're talking with Glenn Shelton, and he's the founder of Lead Heroes. You can check them out at leadheroes.com. And it began in early 2015 when he realized there had to be a better way to get a telemarketed lead. Now, as an independent agent, Glenn has tried all types of lead sources from a live telemarketer, avatar, voicemail, direct mail, internet, just to name a few. And he realized that the lead with the highest return on investment, as well as being high in quality, were live telemarketer leads. So we're going to find out what that's all about, what you need to know. So Glenn, glad to be talking to you. Hey, Robert, really appreciate you taking the time to have me on the show and super excited to be here. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to hear about this because for at least for me, this is one of those topics that it seems like every six to 12 months, it sort of comes up in my mind or someone mentions it and it dies a really quick death. And I think that I, I don't know, I just I get to to twist it around in it. It, it just seems like uh, this, this this beast that I can't really uh, get to because, you know, like I, I know with some friends where back in the day they set up the these huge call centers and I, and I look at mm-hmm. something like that and I'm like, I don't even know where to begin with that. And then it also makes me think back to a few years ago, I began hiring someone to call my customers and just, you know, with a quick message and say, thanks sure. for buying or here's an upsell. And I thought that was, that was a really great way to get started. But then for whatever reason that, that f- uh, kind of fell off the list of things that I'm doing. And so whenever this, you know, phone call telemarketer thing comes back into the the fray, I'm never really sure if it's, if it's right for me. So, I mean, is that a good place for us to jump off here? Like, you know, no, them- I think that's perfect. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I yeah. really, I really do. And, and it's interesting. And, and Robert, you probably know this better than anyone, but um, it's one of those things that even though at the telephone has been around for, you know, what, 150 years, it's right. still something that's crucial to the sales process. Usually, you know, depending on the service and the product, usually, especially if it's a higher end product or service, there has to be some sort of phone call. Um, and so that's the thing, especially so insurance, right? So my background specific to insurance and a lot of times you're either calling this person to get them on the phone or you're calling them to set an appointment to go see them. Um, and obviously I understand there's probably some people listening they're like, well, I don't need, I don't have to touch a phone to sell anybody. And I get it. Yes, I know. Drop shipping products. I get it. But um, there are still plenty of times that someone needs to get on the phone. And a lot of times it is a very, you know, entry level, low level task to do that, right? I mean, this is just grunt work. And to scale a company or to even just grow your profits as a salesperson, you can't bog yourself down with this entry level work. And I think, Robert, to touch on your point when you're saying, man, it comes up and then it disappears and you've thought about it, it's a lot of work. (laughs) It's a ton of work to set up a call center to stay on top of it. I think that's why you'll see some people who they might dabble in it or, or they might start to get involved and then they, they stop doing it. You know, I was a full time producing insurance agent and then I had to stop producing from the insurance sales because it was so much work to manage my call center, to continue to hire and scale. Um, and that's one of the it's one of those things I get people all the time who are like, well, Glenn, why would I pay you when I could go do this myself for less? And they'll cite some prices. I'm like, yeah, you know, absolutely. You can do it for less. But it, it's really a time game. You know, essentially, I'm selling time at the end of the day. I'm, I'm letting you offload these low level tasks that are time wasters. And I will manage that process for you. Uh, and then you can focus on your high level, you know, your actual money making activities that will totally drive up your bottom and hopefully your upline as well. That sounds like a great place to be. And yeah, what you described there, it sounds like that people might be stuck between a rock and a hard place here because they say, well, this phone call stuff, it's time consuming, it's grunt work like you mentioned. But on the other hand, it's not like it's not it's it's hard to just hand that off, right? Without some some training. That way people are making the phone calls and, and they know what they're talking about. So with this um, whole, like with your team and your company and what you guys do, are you only cold callers? Do you only do new leads? Do you call customers? Like what sort of like sub areas do you guys provide? And that's a great question. So it, it all started with cold calling. 
um, for lead generation. That, that's what I built the foundation of my company on. But, you know, over the years, we've continued to experiment and to grow and to try different things in different verticals. You know, we do appointment setting now, um, whether it's from our internal database or something that's being provided to us. You know, so that's something that's newer that we've been doing. Um, we can also contact opt-in data, you know, leads that were submitted online. Um, you know, we've called direct mail leads. I mean, just about anything phone related, we can take inbound calls. Um, I mean, I've, I've either experimented with it or looked at it or we're already doing it. So there's, there's a lot of different opportunities. You know, I, I really look at my business as kind of a, a Swiss army knife, right? I mean, there's so many things you can do with a call center. You can have it as an answering service, you know, customer service, you know, outbound, uh, scheduling, appointment setting. I mean, there's there's just all these different tasks and it's not even just, you know, again, I, my background is insurance, specifically the senior insurance market, but it, it's really, it can cross into any vertical. Um, and, and one other point I'll touch on here too, uh, I think why we've been so su successful or me or lead heroes um, is specifically because I went straight to the source. You know, once I realized this is what I wanted to do, I actually packed up and flew over there. <laughs> I spent several weeks in the Philippines networking, exploring, learning the culture, meeting with my existing employees, looking for new employees, and there's no middlemen. You know, that's the other thing. If there's one thing I could try to really stress for anyone who's looking for a call center, regardless of who you work with, make sure you're going to someone who is the source. There's so many middlemen in the marketing game. And Robert, again, I'm sure you are well aware of this, but I'll see people who are reselling services, who are reselling someone else's services, who are reselling someone else's services. You know, it's it, it's asinine. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not only is it, you know, there's the delay factor and there's the, at, you're paying, you know, 10 times, 20 times as much as what you need to be paying, but it sounds like that scenario you're laid out, there's real, really a game of telephone happening there, right? I mean, in the, in the bad way. So that Absolutely. way you say, I need this, and it gets passed down, passed down, the language barrier, different people's interpretations. Next thing you know, you're not getting what you wanted. So that's really great to hear that. You, you jumped in, you figured it out yourself. And uh, so if people are looking into this whole like call center stuff, does their business need to be a certain size? Because I asked that because I've had, you know, um, uh, like phone sales type of people on the phone before. And they say like, oh, well, we only work, you know, if you want to hire 12 people or all this like crazy stuff, which really has me a little bit discouraged. So is there like a minimum commitment or a minimum size people need to be in order to use some of these services of yours? And that's a fantastic question, Robert. Um, the the interesting part that I think, and I've looked at some of these really large companies who are outsourcing, who have call centers overseas. You know, I'll give you an example. If you try to call Chase Bank, right? So one of my one of my bank accounts is attached to Chase. Um, I tried calling in, and lo and behold, I was immediately talking to someone overseas. So uh, I think this was something that a lot of these large companies have been leveraging for years, right? Outsource work overseas for lower labor costs. And I like to think of myself as being able to bring what they've been leveraging for, for this many years. I like to think that I can bring that to the small businesses and the, and the medium-sized businesses. You know, I work with independent agents who are 100% individual, you know, that they, they don't have... Um, a big staff, or they don't have an office, they might be working out of their home, you know, I mean, so, so that's the thing. And, and I, yeah, I, I don't think you have to be a large company to do stuff like this, to work with me or, or even to f go find your own call center to work with. You know, I, I think as long as you have some sort of marketing budget, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be massive, but at the same time, you can't show up with $50 and, and think uh, it's going to take you to the moon. So there, there is definitely some marketing expenses and kind of a ramp period as you figure out what's working and what's not working and adjusting to the new marketing style if you're not used to using a call center for your marketing. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I think this applies to individuals, small businesses, and medium businesses. Super cool. It sounds like you're tapping into all these markets that a lot of other call center types of companies are, are you know, 
skipping over and missing out. So good news for you. And so you mentioned there that so when people come and they start working with you, there's a it sounds like there's a little bit of a, a ramping up period to figure out like what the needs are, what the processes are. So can you walk us through that a little bit? Like if someone comes to you and your company, what's what's that like as far as getting everyone on the same page up to speed, rocking and rolling here? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of people like to try a sample, right? They, they want to try a, a test and, and I'm all about that. And I do have minimums that are as low as $250 to run a, t- a campaign with us. However, the problem that I see that I run into quite a bit um, is I don't think the sample size is large enough to give an accurate representation of how it will work for you in the short term or long term. Um, and, and that's the battle I fight. It was interesting to look at my statistics from my customer base and to see that the people who are ordering larger quantities, um, who are paying for more leads, who are, are have a bigger marketing budget, seem to almost always be significantly happier. I don't have the exact statistics in front of me, and I apologize, but I mean, it would. It seems like I want to say it was like three times more likely that that client was going to be happy versus the person who just ordered one tiny sample. So, you know, I try to accommodate those. I try to accommodate people who might have a smaller budget or who want to try uh, a service. But the correct way of doing it, and not just with lead heroes or with any marketing company, really, the correct way is to have a budget in place and to really track it over, you know, four, six, eight 12 weeks and then kind of view results at the end um, and figure out, well, this is working. It could be better. And then either continue or tweak or move on and try something else. Okay. That makes a lot of sense that if, if the budget's too small, the sample size is too small, then there, there's not enough calls being made to, to maybe get to the gold. Maybe it's just because there's only a few calls being made, then there's not that chance to, you know, to, to make those sales. And so let's say someone comes to you with a, a decent sized budget. I'm not sure what, what that amount would be, but enough to move the needle a little, a little bit. What are the steps involved? What happens once uh, someone comes to you? What's the, the training like? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, Ideally, I think it's about, and again, we have different verticals. For example, we've been doing some calling for real estate. Um, so that's that's kind of different from our, our insurance verticals that we work in. But ideally, I think a, a good size budget is going to be in the one to $2,000 range. And now how quickly you rinse and repeat that budget is going to totally be up to you and your business and, you know, obviously conversion on the on the marketing that we're doing for you. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a pretty good size budget where you can probably get uh, enough quantity, you know, and, and some of what we do uh, is, is a higher price because it takes us more time or the data we're using is higher quality or it comes from a different source. So there, there's some variables in there, but I would say really ideally at least $1,000, uh, if not two or three, uh, to really give you a, a good sample size. Okay, so a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, and then once once all that happens, like how is the is there like I, I imagine there's some kind of back and forth, right, for you and your team to figure out like what's the offer, figure out a script, figure out objections, things like that. Oh, absolutely. You know, so if it's a new vertical, if it's a script we've never tried, um, there can be a lot of uh, that that back and forth, the learning, the changing, the tweaking. Um, it, it is a very, almost a science really. <laughs> Sometimes I almost feel like I'm a, I'm a mad scientist because you have to just experiment, right? I mean, that's really what marketing comes down to. I mean, we all hear over and over a B split testing, right? Um, you'll see it in these marketing softwares. You'll read it in the books. You'll see it online. And that's really how it is from the call center environment as well. I mean, all the way down to just changing a single word. You know, like recently we changed a uh, call back to contact you. Um, and it seems to be having a positive effect for both us and the clients we work with. So that's that you, you really just have to test. And if it's a brand new script, a brand new vertical that, you know, maybe my team doesn't have the experience in, it's not that we can't make it work. It's just we have to have that time and testing behind us before we can really just run. 
Interesting. So it, it sounds like, and like, you know, uh, you can feel free to agree or disagree with me or correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds sure. like, so you're mentioning that you know, there are these, these verticals that, that you and your team are already super familiar with, right? Like real estate or insurance, but then some people might be say coaches where there's more of, of a learning curve process. So I imagine that if, if someone is already in real estate or insurance or something, and it's, you might already like have most of the script already made that things can just plug in. Is that right? Or is that way off base? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you go to leadheroes.com and you get to the insurance leads page and you get to the order page, you can see all of our samples and it's all fixed price. You know, it's all right there. You can see it. Um, you can see the samples, you can read the scripts. I mean, it's, it's a very plug and play. You pay as you go. You know, you don't have to set up an account. We are, we're not going to auto bill you like a lot of these other companies like to do. Um, but yeah, when it comes to someone who might be a consultant or a coach or, you know, just in a completely different vertical from what we're already doing, uh, that would be, again, it'd be more of a experimental. We'll have to, you know, talk about the area, the target demographic, the script you want to use, the goals for the campaign, your marketing. I mean, there's just a lot of variables. <laughs> there really is. And I always, I always have clients or prospects, uh, people who reach out who want a simple answer, who want it to be, you know, white and black, like what's the closing percentage or, you know, uh, how many people are you going to be able to talk to in this area for me? Uh, stuff like that. And it's just like, well, you know, there's different times of day to make phone calls. Um, there are different areas. Some areas are better, typically uh, more rural country areas. I, I like to call them secondary markets. Uh, I think secondary markets do really well. And I think that's across all marketing and advertising platforms. I think primary markets get saturated uh, fairly quickly. Um but yeah, I mean, like you said, no, I, I do agree with that. There's there If we're in that vertical and we're having success, yeah, it's very plug and play. You know, there's really not a lot that needs to happen. But yeah, if, if you're outside of what we're doing, it's not that we can't work with you. It's just that it's, it's going to have to be more of a consultation phone call with me and, and I'll have to see if it's a good fit um, and we'll have to kind of play with the numbers. Well, that's total, totally logical. So um, when we got started, we we started talking here. You mentioned that there are different subcategories that, that you and your team can provide, like the inbound call center or the appointment setting or the cold calling. So it has me thinking, do you have any just really cool – do you have like a really cool case study of some kind of client who came to you and said – I mean, I'm not even sure what to do when you and your team figured out some ideas and plugged away and came up with something really great? Specifically something custom or something in the verticals we're already doing? Because I, I mean, I have someone, you know, one of one of my longest standing clients and he, I've worked very closely with him and his company, uh, mainly just to make sure that what we're doing stays viable, right? I mean, obviously I want to know if, if a closing percentage just drops or an area is terrible or there's a certain person that's not working on my team, all, all of that. Um, so, I mean, in, in that sense, in, in the insurance vertical, I mean, absolutely. I'm, unfortunately, I don't have it necessarily in a published format, uh, but I mean, we have the data. You know, I, I have the data from people we've worked with. Um, specifically, the senior market, I mean, the, those are the people who, who seem to still answer the phone and they're still receptive to it. And that's why most of what we do is targeting the senior market. You know, these are people who still have home phones who still answer the phone, who are still uh, excited to a certain degree to talk to someone. I mean, especially if you're, in a, if you're a senior and you're living in a rural area, you are fairly likely to answer that, that phone and, and you're also more likely to share information um, with us. And, and you know, typically it's a very brief phone call to gather information to pass along to a sales expert. I mean, that, that's really our go-to. Well, and you bring up an interesting point there is in that it seems like the phone usage has decreased a little bit with the millennials and the texting and the Facebook and the apps, which is sort of a double-edged sword, right? Because it's like, well, less people are answering the phone, but I, I imagine, and I'm not, I'm just guessing here, but I imagine that number one, people running real successful businesses are still using the phone. And number two, if you get someone on the phone, it seems like that's that means a lot more these days. Am I right? 
Oh, you're absolutely right. And I can't think of the exact company or website, but just the other day I was trying to call someone and there was not a phone number that was coming up right away. And I, I got to the point where I was having to search and it was frustrating. Um, the other day I was calling other companies in my vertical, in my niche, just to experiment and I didn't get anyone on the phone. I mean, it's one of those things where it is that double edged sword. And and you're right. You know, I did just talk about seniors and then the millennials, the the younger generation, the 20 to 40 crowd. You know, they don't most of them don't have home phones. Most of them aren't talking on the phone nearly as much as the older crowd. Uh, but I think that's where it comes into uh, more of a inbound. You know, it could be customer service. I mean, that's it. There's still there's still going to be needs. I just think those needs change. You know, it, it could be appointment scheduling, customer service, inbound phone calls. I mean, you know, uh, confirmations for delivery products. I mean, all, all that stuff. So I, again, I, and cause I get that question, well, Glenn, you know, cold calling is going to die or, or call centers are going to disappear. I'm like, well, yes and no. I, you know, I, the phone, like I said, like I said earlier in this interview, the phone has been around for, you know, 150 plus years. It's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. It will continue to change and evolve, but you we, we're still going to need to talk. You know, that's how we communicate. We got to talk to people. Right. And as you said, there are many different avenues. For example, delivery confirmation. And so this now makes me think, well, do you provide any sort of B2B stuff? Like, for example, if there's someone who wants to get on TV, do you, do you make calls to the media? Or if someone's looking to land speaking gigs, do you, you call venues? Do you do things like that? You know, and that's something we haven't done that we could do. Um, what happens if, it, again, if it comes to something that's outside of our fixed price offers, um, it really comes to a custom rate based on what we're going to look at doing. Um, and, and that's the thing. And, and if it does get to the point where we're doing enough in that niche or in that vertical, we can offer a fixed price service like I'm doing with some of my other services. Um, but out, out the gate, we can't really promise, you know, a, a fixed price or certain results without that experimentation phase. But that being said, yeah, I mean, B2B, I, I know we've dabbled in it before. I think we could do a whole hell of a lot more in that space. Um, you know, something like seminars, right? Seminars are, are red hot. Um, and that's something I would love to get involved in is like that invitation space. You know, I've done seminars as an insurance agent previously myself. I wish I had had a call center behind me so we could have had more people show up in that seminar. Um, and so, again, it's just things like that. And it doesn't have to be cold calling. You know, majority of what we do is cold calling, but it can also be, you know, inbound, warm you know, warm leads, people who found you on your website, et cetera. I mean, all of that. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, if, if you're not in, in that area yet, that's a, a, a custom job. And so just to help us get a handle on this idea, this might be a, a totally loaded and useless question, but if someone comes to you and your team with, you know, that $2,000 budget, like about what do they get from that? Is that like a handful of calls? Is that hundreds, thousands of calls? Like how much, I guess, stuff do people get for their money here? Useless question, Robert. Just useless. <laughs> no, I'm just easy. So um, it, it, there's variables, but to give you kind of an approximation on that $2,000 window there, um, <clears throat> and as far as about how many calls you could expect us to make for that budget. I mean, it's going to be in the 10 to 15,000 calls that oh, we wow. can make. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing this at a high volume at a high speed. Um, and, and that's, again, that's what separates us from a lot of these smaller, or if, if you have one person making calls for you, which is great, but you know, we can make a lot of calls in a short amount of time. And I'm able to also manage the quality from start to finish. And, and that's, again, what really I think has set us apart. But yeah, I mean, look at it from a number standpoint. What do you think you could do with 10 to 15,000 phone calls? You know what? I mean, I, I know that could be a lot of money for me if, if I had just them calling for my business, right? Right. I mean, I mean, call the whole dang customer database if you have a thousand dollar product i mean you only have to sell a handful to to break even or have uh 
all right, get some appointments figured out. I mean, you, you can do one campaign like that, get the calendar booked for the whole dang year just on coaching calls. That's it. I mean, that, that's that's the power of, of what I'm doing and, and the power of a call center and being able to reach out to that many people that quickly. And it, it's a human interaction. It's not, you know, mail. It's not a robot. It's not another website or email. You know, it's a human talking to a human. You know, it's it's what we've been doing for for hundreds, thousands of years, you know. Right. So um, so when people go over to leadheroes.com and they go and they, they, they sign up or they figure this out, is there anything that you wish people would know going in? Because I, I imagine it's like sometimes with this kind of situation, there might be miscommunications, growing pains. So after all your, your experience, all your clients, all your years of, of experience here, is there anything that you wish people knew going into using your team and your services? Well, we touched on one of the big ones earlier. Um, I, I think just, and I think the struggle for me in the insurance vertical, because I deal with a lot of individual independent agents who treat their career more as a job and less as a business. Um, if, if I could say anything to sales professionals, whether you're an entrepreneur, um, you're an independent sales rep, or maybe you're just looking at doing something different, try to really structure your finances as a business would, even if you aren't technically incorporated. Um, and look at marketing instead of as, oh, damn it, I have to spend money on marketing. Look at it as, you know, the lifeblood of your business and realize you want to allocate as much money as you really can to marketing. Um, and then also that uh, when it comes to ROI, when it comes to, you know, looking at closing percentages, you can't just look at what happened after a week. You know, you have to look at it after 30, 60, 90 days and it takes follow up. Um, you know, again, depending on, on the plat, the service and the platform and, and the vertical and what we're doing. But a lot of the times, if you look at our, our lead generation from seven days versus 90 days, I mean, you could be talking about a, a five times difference in, in closing percentage. So, you know, it, I just want to make sure anyone who works with me has very realistic expectations of, you know, what needs to be done. There's still work that needs to be done. We, We'll, we'll handle the marketing for you. You know, we can handle anything call center related for you. But when it comes to sales, you know, that's where you either need to do it yourself or you need to have someone who's going to sell those leads for you. Makes perfect sense. So I love it. So uh, have the that biggest marketing budget possible. That way you, you keep the machine rolling. And then also ha have a little bit of patience. Some of these things take time and follow up yes. to, to get it exactly dialed in. So, I mean, this has been a, a super great conversation. Lots of uh, ahas for me, especially, I'm sure, for the listeners. So is leadheroes.com, is that just the, the number one only place to go? Is there any other place or is that just the, the happening spot? That is the happening spot. It is uh, leadheroes.com, L-E-A-D-H-E-R-O-E-S.com. Um, I realize, Robert, you might have a much wider audience than uh, the insurance vertical that I'm primarily operating in. So anyone who's listening, if you do want to talk about doing something custom, um, I'm hoping maybe I got you thinking creatively about problem solving using a call center. Um, I would love to speak with you. I would. Um, and feel free to schedule. You can schedule an appointment with me on my website. Um, if you call in on our 1-800 number, they can schedule an appointment with me. Um, or if you email, I have assistants who can also schedule an appointment with me. So yeah, I would love to talk to you. Super cool. I'm excited for people to, to reach out to you. I mean, a lot of our listening audience are stuck online. Like you mentioned earlier that Sometimes you went to websites and you couldn't even find a phone number. I think that a lot of people listening have that exact problem. Some of them are coaches. Some of them have books and courses and things like that, but they need to reach more people. And a lot of them too need to get back in touch with some of those uh, old customers there. So I think that a lot of people listening need to go there. So I don't have the webpage open in front of me right now, but leeheroes.com. Is there an easy link or is there something specific to click on there to get that phone call scheduled or to find that 800 number? Yeah, uh, the contact us page. So it's right at the top navigation bar. So leadheroes.com, um, right at the top, you can go to contact us. You can either submit in a, a message, which goes right to a shared email account with me and a couple of my executive assistants, or right underneath that, you can actually just schedule a phone call. Um, I use Acuity 
um, which I think is terrific software. I, I, I'm not affiliated. That is not a paid ad, but um, highly recommend Acuity for anyone who's trying to manage their time better. And it's it's plugged right there on my website. So you can actually look at my calendar and select a 30 minute time slot um, as my availability you know, uh, permits. Super cool. So there's no reason at all to, to hesitate. Every reason out there to take action, go to leadheroes.com, click on that contact us link, and then shoot the message or even uh, go and look at that calendar, that scheduler, and that way you just get your time slot booked in. And so there, there, like, there's every reason right there to go and, and do it. So go ahead and do it right now, leadheroes.com, and we'll see you there. And thanks so much, Glenn, for stopping by and for sharing with us uh, parts of your story and telling us what we need to do in order to get heard and get noticed. Because as you know, things are just more and more crowded and complicated, but there are these basic principles that stand the test of time, right? The the phone has been around for 150 years. It'll be around for the next 15,000 years, right? Yeah, it'll it'll exactly. always be there. So we need to be using it. A lot of people don't. If we do, we'll stand out. We'll make the difference. We'll get those extra sales other people don't. So leadheroes.com. And thanks, Glenn, for stopping by. Hey, thank you, Robert. Check out the latest episodes of our podcast on the web at marketeroftheday.com. And subscribe to us on iTunes at marketeroftheday.com slash iTunes or search the phrase Robert Plank in your iTunes app to find us there.